do not know where Namibia is, but it's in Southern Africa, just neighboring South Africa. And I'm very excited to be doing this session because it's something I really love is, you know, empowering people to think about their job searches differently. I don't have music today. I do not think most of you like my music, but uh, what I do want to start with is we all have a goal. You know, you guys joined Ten Academy because you have a goal. Uh, some more personal than others. And so I'd just like you to put in the chat, you know, what is your goal in terms of your dream? Uh, whether it is to build your own IT company or whatever, just like uh, each of us to just share, you know, you, you can write one word, a sentence, whatever. If that's okay, just let's share what is our goal with this journey, because that's important and that ties into the theme for today's session. If that's okay. Maybe Rudolf, you can guide us. I'll pick on somebody who's at least been a participator since he joined. And if it's personal, it's okay, but you can just say, I want to secure a job in data engineering or a software developer. You can just say, that's that okay. I don't see the chats coming in. So please help us just remember our goal. The end of the year, we've started something very intensive and we just need to remember our goal. Rudolf, can you go first? You don't have to say it, you just type it. Oh, okay. But I can speak. There's no problem. Okay. Oh, oh, so okay, cool. Somebody already said secure my first ML job. High five to you. Rudolf, you can carry on speaking. Okay, good. So I will start with the um, um, the reason why I joined Ten Academy. Mm -hmm. Um is to first of all uh, sharpen my skills and secure a well paid job. And my biggest dream is to own an AI company in Africa. Lovely. To address African problems. That's deep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Um, some people are saying secure my first global level job. I'm in that era where um, securing meaningful global jobs is really something I'm also after. Uh, to start my international career, high five. Yvonne, uh, power to women. Uh, somebody says, my goal is to get a global level job and be an inspiration to help the youth to do the same. I think um, you and I are aligned on that one. I don't know how to say your name, but uh, I also want to empower people back home to dream bigger. Uh, work as a data engineer or data analyst in the international workspace, you know. There's just a different level when you work internationally uh, that sets you apart in the in the job market. So thank you everyone for sharing. I encourage you to keep sharing. Why I did this exercise is to remind you of why you started this journey uh, and to encourage you to remember that often we forget, we just see the hurdles and we forget that we once had a goal and a dream. And so that should kind of keep us going. This journey. I'm going to take my camera off only because I'll be sharing my screen and speaking, but please keep sharing. So the purpose of today is to really empower you with a different way of thinking. Can you all share, see my screen? Let me just do the virtual etiquette. Can you all see my screen? Not yet. And now? Yeah, we can see. Okay, okay. So what I want us to get out of today is have a conversation. So I encourage questions, maybe towards the end or in between. I really, really want to meet you where you are and one, one of the, your biggest needs in terms of the conversation for today. So in as much as I'm going to take you through what the next challenge will be from a career's perspective, I also want you to take this opportunity to ask questions and, and just clarify some of the things you've been thinking about because I do understand that most of you, if not some of you have worked before, have been trying to secure that global job before. Um, and so let's just have a conversation, okay? So today, or the challenge for, for this week will be around um, kind of empowering you to get clear on the jobs that you're looking for. So yeah, so the, the theme or the topic is three real world jobs you want to take up. So again, to your goal, 
you know, what are those jobs that you want to take up. And I, I'll speak about due dates later, but this, this, the, the aim of why you joined and, and why 10 Academy exists is so that after the six months program, you are job ready. But more than that, we have placed and secured you a job or empowered or enabled you to secure a job towards the end of the program, right? And with this in mind, we must start thinking about what are those, some of you want to secure a job, but that goal is not clear yet. You need to be very clear on what job do you want to secure. To the extent that you must understand how much the job pays. If it's a remote job, you know, what are the pros and cons? If it's a, you really want to move to a country like Germany where IT skills is from, from Africa is actually being very much embraced, is understanding visa requirements, visa sponsorships, etc. Okay. Um, so for this exercise, we're going to narrow it down and focus on data in engineering for now. And some of the things that you must notice when you do um, job searches or trying to get clarity on your job is concentrate or for this, for this specific um, challenge, concentrate on companies that are actively hiring. I can think of many, many companies that are hiring. And one region that I know is hiring IT skills right now is Germany. Uh, in Europe, I can highlight Germany. I can highlight the Netherlands. Um, that is really having companies that are actively hiring. So when you're doing this uh, challenge or exercise is to concentrate on those companies that are actively hiring, meaning there are jobs being posted every, every week, okay? Uh, for instance, until November 1st, uh, the 2024, you know, the U.S. will not be filling any job, no matter how qualified you are. So it may not be wise for you to look in the U.S. job market for now, you know, uh, just or, or look into into jobs in the U.S. office for now, you know, if that is your goal. Um, so uh, similar to how you cannot initiate a relationship with a hiring manager or recruiter that is not actively seeking for somebody to hire. OK, so you want to put all of your effort where there is high probability of you being uh, kind of uh, taken or, or absorbed into into that market. OK, so we all know that there are job adverts um, and this is like a common way for certain employers to draw various people to to positions, right? But more than a job, there's other things and other elements that we need to consider. But I think we know that there are many reasons for why job adverts go out. Um, some could be because there's a new role created. Some could be because uh, the company is restructuring. I know that IT is a big, or data engineering or certain fields, technical skills in, in the digital space is a big thing because most of the companies are growing and expanding. Um, there's also a rise in the startup market where um, IT skills are essential or an essential resource or talent that they are actively seeking, right? Um, so why do creations of uh, new roles occur? I don't want to get into that um, increase in workload, uh, restructuring, uh, you know, growth, there's various reasons why new roles of, uh, occur or are open. Whatever the reason is, you know, um, companies want to expand and grow their teams because they also want to expand and grow their business and kind of uh, maximize their market share, okay? So for this exercise, what we want you to do, and I'll give you the task, but I just want to pause here and, you know, speak about there are various job boards where you can apply or look for these data engineering jobs. There's LinkedIn. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Indeed. Uh, and Pascalina, I just asked if there are questions in the chat, you just alert me. There's AngelList. AngelList, ZipRecruiter, Monster, Flex Jobs really has remote. Most of them always have remote IT jobs or, or digital jobs um, open to uh, anywhere people living across the world and not just a specific market. Uh, there's flex jobs, there's Glassdoor, there's career builder, they're simply hired. I want to switch my screen and just show you guys 
some of the tips and tools in terms of when you are applying for a job, right? Let me know when you can see my LinkedIn. Can you guys see my screen and my LinkedIn? Am I still audible? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So, guys, this this will be linked in, right? And you are looking for a job. Now, we're just focusing on data engineering for today, right? Or, or data engineer. First, first things first. My first tip to you guys is be very mindful that different companies use different variations of the same job title, or they they of the same job. So. Some of them could call it senior data engineer, lead data engineer, cloud engineer, but kind of the purpose of the role is similar. It's just that uh, there's nuances in terms of, of, of what their job entails. You guys would know. So I'm looking for a data engineer job. I search worldwide, and I'm on LinkedIn now, right? I search worldwide as my location. Why? Because, uh, you know, like Yvonne, I just want to secure a, a global job. Now, there are some, of, some things that you guys can do, right? Firstly, I always filter to remote, right? Why? Because I can't afford to go to Germany right now. Um, but I'll show you a trick where you can actually say visa-sponsored um, jobs. Then date posted, I always make it a week only because I'm looking for the most recent and relevant jobs. Are you guys with me? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Your your filters are very important. You guys, you guys are more tech savvy than I am. Your filters are very important because it will help you find the right roles. Very, very important. Now, because I am located in Indonesia, it's giving me all the Indonesian stuff. So what do I do? I change remote. And you guys have VPN, so you, you could also change your location on sorry, I'm not spelling remote, right? You could also change your location on um um on the search function or i just need to do that Let's refresh just give me worldwide Okay, still giving me, okay, you see, um, and, and you guys can see when I say different companies have different naming conventions for specific jobs, right? Uh, now, there's a trick that I always do when I'm searching for a job. Let's say I want this job in Germany. Um, now, for German-based jobs, when the job is written in German, if you don't speak German, it means they're mostly looking for a German uh citizen or somebody who who is has a uh, has already kind of rights to work in germany etc what i do if if my location is germany i always just say english speaking data engineering jobs okay for me to to find it so but when you see that the role is written in germany most of the times they're not open to non-german speakers or if you don't have uh, rights to work in germany so let let's look at I want to go to somewhere where there's the Cypress one. Sorry, I just want to look at something to give you an example. OK, you will see that what is nice about LinkedIn is some of the jobs tell you who the hiring manager is for the recruiter, right? What I do is I will go to Muhammad. I will connect with him and follow him right that's a trick that i do i'll also go to this julio company i'll connect and follow them only because then that helps me be updated in terms of when they have opportunities open yeah so that's kind of tricks and, and tips on how to do um, job searches on linkedin and it's really very important to read the fine lines especially when it comes to remote job because some of them say remote from the us remote from um from the eu right 
but for us we can use worldwide as an option or you can type in EMEA uh, I think which should be Eastern mid uh, Europe Europe Middle Eastern and Africa I think not I think I know so the EMEA region would be Middle East Europe and Africa any questions or uh, kind of comments on LinkedIn searches Are you guys there? I'm not able to see your questions. Okay, okay. Yes, you are. Okay. So LinkedIn has a wealth of, you know, uh, jobs that you can apply for. And again, if it's in Germany, just always make sure you say English speaking and there's a range of German speaking and the trick of past week really works because it helps you kind of get the most recent where there's not so many um, applicants as well uh, that 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 are going for that job so another one that I want to share with you guys is indeed which is actually a very good resource um, but also very tricky. So on Indeed, uh, you would need to say remote. Uh, and, and these filters we're all familiar with in terms of, you know, the job type. You can, what's nice about Indeed is you can actually also ask for the pay uh, or, or say, you know, what is your pay range like in US dollars or whatever the currency is. I usually, when, when I go to Google on Indeed, I usually say Indeed remote jobs because Indeed has different, there's Indeed for Hong Kong, there's Indeed for Germany, there's Indeed. So I would usually do Indeed remote and it would give me a wider range of those specific jobs. Yeah. And I encourage if you do not have one yet, please create an Indeed account. Um, that is important and set your alerts on so that you're able to receive alerts on, on those specific um, jobs. So again, for this challenge, you will be focusing on searching for data engineering jobs. Be mindful that some of the jobs have different naming conventions, data inter integration engineer, you know, um, but it, some, most of them fall in one job family. So be very clear on, on, on kind of those kind of jobs. Uh, what is, that's a very good question. What's the difference between apply and is apply? Um, so let me first address Hassan's question. What about profiles, assessment skills? They do we need them? Uh, I've I've seen that some of the companies do not do the profiling and assessments yet uh, until you move on. So in the EU market specifically, or Western market, they have what they call uh, different. Um, process different steps in the recruitment process the first is when you apply secondly they will do what they call a discovery call with you between you and the recruiter you know just trying to get to know you um, and maybe after that they send you an assessment and then you kind of meet the leadership team which is the person you are reporting to plus the team that you're working with and then you go meet with kind of the the founder or whoever depending on the size of the business right but skills, profiles, assessments, those are done only when you progress in the recruitment stage. Uh, some companies do some, pro some sort of profiling before. Um, so just be prepared for those. Uh, if you're referring to, let's say, uh, psychometric or, or those uh, kind of personality tests, if you have one and you want to share it, then yes, I just want you to be mindful that there's also bias in the recruitment process. Um, so the the less you share about yourself on now, the not the less, but uh, uh, yeah, people can just there's a bias in the recruitment process. So sharing your personality test is is a good thing, but don't kind of share the report. Maybe just say, uh, for example, the Maya Briggs. Just say what personality type you are. Uh, Rudolf, I'll get to you now, uh, and then easy apply and apply. Easy apply just means that you apply on LinkedIn itself, on the LinkedIn site. Even on Indeed, there's, there's kind of easy apply where you easy, it's like maybe it takes you a minute or so to fill in like three lines. 
uh, and then apply means when you click apply it takes you to that specific company's website and you apply from there how how do we find entry level jobs on LinkedIn? Uh, I'll show you. It's literally just filtering to to say job level. Um, you 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 can really. That's a very good question. Uh, it means that I'm actually I'm talking sense. You you can actually just filter and say uh, I'll share this tab instead. So additional filters, experience level, you know, entry level. Would be would be nice um, what I like with some of the European jobs also in terms of entry level they would also share what the salary is and if you read along the line they would also say you know we we cover your re relocation cost look at this one the data engineering one in Scotland is actually saying it's 55,000 pounds a year uh, I want to earn in pounds <laughs> uh, so those are some of the things uh, Rudolf, I'll give you a chance now. Um, so yes, say Hassan on a on a on a on a need to know basis. Rudolf, you have a question. Okay, good. Yes, uh, thank you, people. I would like to know. First of all, I, I have an account on Indeed, and I noticed yeah. that almost the job are from US. So yes, I would like yes. to know how to to find other job uh, other job on indeed from other countries and okay okay yeah uh, i'll go to google rudolph can you see my google account yes so i type in indeed remote jobs because again like i said there's indeed us indeed uh, and then i'll just say remote or if i wanna uh, i would how you can you can be specific then you can have different accounts where you say indeed data engineering the only thing with the us is if you're wherever you're located your time zone and this there's like a significant gap in terms of time zone i would say data engineering germany jobs i would do that i'll do that and it will it will take me there but again, you see, it's in some of them might be in Germany, uh, in German. Sorry. Then I'll just say English-speaking uh, jobs. Uh, you would need to type in your search thing English-speaking data engineering German jobs. So Indeed is a bit tricky. There's, they they don't have Indeed where they just look at everything. There's Indeed for a specific market, and that is why really taking time before you start applying to be very clear on a. Uh, what kind of roles be what kind of market see um, just kind of the company type the size and again looking at companies that are actively recruiting is very very important actively recruiting is very important because there's high demand for your skill set Um, for your skill set I just want to share one last one on the job boards flex jobs for instance uh, mostly you will find flex jobs as, as uh, um, a lot of IT stuff but what I do not like and I'll be honest about flex job somehow some way you pay for you to be able to apply on the site so it's just very important to maybe just look at what the company name is and then you just go on the company site to apply you need to create an account I think you pay for it there's, or there's a free trial or something around this one and this one um let's say simply hired simply hired is also a, another one um where you when you can find um those specific jobs um but where where, where you glass door my top i would say glass door linkedin indeed is really where you can find um uh, you know volumes in terms of the jobs and also recent jobs yeah sometimes uh, like simply hired has jobs that were posted a while ago so um, those ones and just the company job boards for for um, for example could also help if you know what company you want to work for let's say it's AWS right um, they are always hiring follow their LinkedIn page and you know just 
actively be looking on the actively looking so let's say i wanna you know this is a company if i read this job board if you guys can still see my linkedin and i really want to work for energy job and and sometimes it's also again what sector you know you want to be a data engineer in the energy sector you want to be a data engineer in the manufacturing i don't know manufacturing or transport or aviation it's really important to get that clarity for yourself so if i say okay you know this is a company that is resonating with me let me see if they have a lot of jobs that they are advertising for i go to their web company page and i just say jobs um and seems like they haven't they have listed so then i do my searches here in terms of the it field are you guys still with me are there any more questions yes Okay. We are with you. And if anyone wants to share their experiences with uh, job search, please, please, just uh, you can share. We're here to learn from each other. You know, we're here to learn what works. The other thing is when you're applying, uh, know that there's your your resume needs to be ATS friendly. And so sometimes I, I really easy apply on LinkedIn is great. Uh, but sometimes you don't get that confirmation that, uh, dear Pio Velo, thank you for your application. You know, sometimes they don't send you that email, so you don't know. Um, so maybe sometimes it's better to apply on, on the website itself. Yes, Rudolf. Okay. I know a given website okay. where okay. we can apply, uh, a remote job is specifically mm -hmm. for remote job. Mm -hmm. It is called crossover. I'll put yes. in the chat. Yes, I know crossover. That's also a good mm -hmm. one. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. And 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 when you Rudolf, thank you for sharing that. And when you when you um, do those remote jobs, always just make sure that you say remote from anywhere, yeah, or remote from Africa your filter because you will apply to jobs and they specific you will apply and you don't know that they specifically looking for a data engineer in the u.s even if you are african you should be low your location should be in the u.s thank you for please, sharing anyone please, else know uh, of a please please people. sorry I, mm -hmm. I don't understand that but can you can you say that again okay uh, let me demonstrate uh, remote jobs. Let me demonstrate quickly. I just, I'm going to. Uh, I just want to find the, the job board that has that filter, yeah? I'll share my screen. So, remote. Uh, let's say we work remotely. Yes, this is a good example. Can you guys still see? Can you see? Rudolf, yes. what it is? Can you see? Okay. So, yeah. you see here, I can type data engineer, right? Now, there's remote from Asia, remote from anywhere, remote from EMEA, remote from the US. So you would want to say anywhere, meaning, or you would want to say Africa. Because if you say the US, you are remote, but you need to be physically re uh, located in Florida, uh, in Georgia, or wherever. You know, so remote from anywhere means they are willing to work with somebody based in Africa, you know, based back home in Namibia, based in Botswana, based in Rwanda, based in Kenya. They are willing to, because their company functions in such a way that they can manage different time zones or oh, and other things. But remote from anywhere jobs are better. And if it's remote from the U.S., then are they willing to pay or sponsor you to move to the U.S.? Can you guys see a remote from anywhere? And this one says, remote from anywhere in 
or Canada, New York, or Washington. Can you guys see? And when I say EMEA, this is what yes. I mean. Yeah. Very, guys, I cannot emphasize, very important because you, you will uh, be putting a lot of effort in jobs that you actually don't qualify for in terms of your location. And this company, I know that they have various IT jobs. So if you guys want to write it down, you can. Uh, Canon, Nicole. I always see it on LinkedIn and everywhere I go. If you guys want to write it down, Canon, Nicole or something. Any more questions before I go to the task? No questions in the chat. Let's see. Daniel, Upwork. Uh, let's talk about Upwork. Upwork is freelance based. And it's going to be very difficult, Daniel. Not impossible, difficult for you to find uh, a role that pays you very well, that is sustainable. If your goal is to secure a remote job, um, I think actually, Daniel, you have a, a very, that's a very good uh, kind of point you're making. You can do up work for training, you know, to just get the gist of remote working because a lot of startups are also recruiting on, on up work, but sometimes it's not long term. and. Uh, the thing that I don't like about Upwork is that they, the jobs there do not have a stable kind of income or really an income that matches your skill. You won't find the big companies um, recruiting there. But it, if you want like a side hustle, uh, you, you can give, provide IT services, data engineering services, Upwork is your platform. Upwork, Fiverr, all of those. I don't know about Turing. Daniel, can you tell us more about Turing? Uh, I've never heard of it. OK, maybe Daniel is busy. Um, so just kind of final notes from my end. Um, you know, before applying for any job, be very clear on your goal. List your preferences. And an example of a preference could be location. Um, Yvonne, I hope your dream is to move to Europe and work from there, be based there. So when you list your preference, your, fil your search filters become important and your criteria. Yvonne, I'm going to just uh, play on you because you're female. Uh, and this will help you narrow down your search. And again, like we went through the exercise of how to filter, you know, job level, et cetera. Um, and you can use keywords from, from these descriptions to look for jobs that are similar. Some keywords could be English-speaking German jobs. You get what I mean? Some, some could be remote from anywhere uh, jobs. Um, and so what is the task, really? Peho has been mumbling a lot, is to find at least three jobs that you can take up by May 2024. But we want us, we want, because we're trying to empower you and build your skill set and kind of build your muscle in terms of uh, getting used to applying for global jobs is let's focus on data engineering first you know uh, find it online find a posting online uh, that is open you know it's not a job that has closed uh, no google links please it should be from a job board and crossover is more than even if it's the job board that we didn't list and it's a position you'd like to pursue remote work is okay you know, and suitable for someone with your level of experience. So uh, when I was, when we were marking your um, assignment on, on the resume, some of you have work experience. So some of you can, can look at mid-level. Um, those of you who don't have, some of you can look at entry-level, you know. Um, so just search for something that is matching your skill set and very important to read the job and say, at least I'm ticking seven out of the 10 boxes of this job, you know? And, and if I'm not, I, it's my dream and I'm going to go after it. And if you want to choose other one of the other three tracks, you can choose ML engineering and, and web three, um, but we suggest starting with data engineering for this exercise for now. Uh, for each of the three jobs that you find, we want to know what the name of the company is, what the title of the position is, 
uh, which team are you joining? Companies usually say this team is in this specific team. Uh, a link to the job ad, the location of the job, when is it closing? Uh, I am aware that sometimes some companies do not say when the job closes or some job boards do not mention it. So you can maybe, I don't know, Pascaline, if we can just say uh, it's not disclosed. I know that on LinkedIn specifically, there are jobs that run for months only because you know, IT skills is such a scarce skill and people are on the hunt, so they have open jobs throughout the year. Um, skills required or skill requirements listed for the job, so just copying and pasting what's on the job ad. Experience requirements, meaning you must have a degree in or you must have a certification in. Uh, nationality, right to work or any related. So I just want to explain this. You know, requirements on nationality could be that they are open remote from anywhere. Could, that could be a case. Or they could be specific to say we're only looking for people in uh, the Netherlands or Germany. Right to work is sometimes some of us have visas uh, for other countries. Some of maybe you have Schengen visas or et cetera, or you could be married to a German citizen. And so that is what right to work means. So sometimes when you apply, you'll see that they ask, do you have a right to work in the US? And that just means do you have some sort of visa or what, like can you move as in yesterday to that country? Salary if disclosed. And just uh, your analysis, share your analysis or reflections on the key challenges uh, for you to be successful to secure this role. And some of the key challenges could be they are looking for people located in, in this area or they are looking for the skill that I do not have um, or they're looking for this experience that I do not have. Bonus that I shared with you, and I don't know if you guys uh, got that tip, very important tip, contact, you know, a LinkedIn contact of the hiring manager. So I always follow the hiring managers if um, they are listed in the job. And a couple of people at that company, right? I will click on the company like I showed you guys and follow a couple of people, follow the company. So bonus, if you, if you, if you add that you've you know, followed and connect, actually connected, connect with the hiring manager, or sometimes it's the recruiter. It's not always that they have a hiring manager on LinkedIn. And then um, bonus if you've contacted or, or connected with people at the team. So an additional thing that we want or info for this assignment or uh, exercise is one to two uh, paragraphs reflecting on main difference between your skill where am I now and what is required of me? So just a gap analysis. And then what lessons have you learned from doing this assignment? And some of you could say the lesson is just how to use my filters properly. Um, a lesson could be that I didn't know remote from anywhere matters. I was spending a lot of my time applying to 10 jobs a week that actually I, I am not quite, I, totally am not quali not qualified but uh, yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not uh, qualified for, not qualified i am not eligible for that's the word i'm looking for and then in terms of the structure of the assignment it's just to identify three jobs like we've I explained and then do it on a powerpoint format maximum four slides again guys the simpler you go the better um, first slide should be your cover page Next three slides should just be about the content and what you discovered. Uh, I think we don't have to do this conversion right as Kaline, because we are going to do uh, PowerPoint, and PowerPoint can be done on 10x. Am I correct, Pascaline? This is not there. Uh, we're saying that we want to submit them to complete it in PowerPoint. Uh, should they still convert their PowerPoint to PDF? because they can upload PowerPoint in, onto 10X. Uh, better the PDF and then share the link on 10X. Okay, so PowerPoint to PDF and then submit the PDF or link on 10X. Okay, cool. Uh, then deadline is not, uh, oh, we are having the session right now. Sorry, and feel free to reach out to Abdullah and Pascaline on Slack if you need more information. And uh, you know, what will we what will we be looking for when we create this exercise? Just the quality of jobs found. Is, did you really put in a lot of uh, attention to the requirements of the job? 
uh, are the jobs re realistic and achievable meaning if you have no experience are you applying for jobs that are requiring somebody with 10 years of experience uh, and do you meet the criteria outlined in the job so that's the quality of the job found analysis is just kind of how you did like a skills gap um, and is it considered and would it be in uh, would its implementation lead to you securing the job you know so whatever the gap is uh, is it realistic for us or for you to build that skill set between now and the six months so that you are job ready and your writing is just very very important and yeah i would like to just switch to pascaline if there's anything i've missed but also just switch to you guys and ask if you have questions or comments because we still have 14 minutes Daniel says, Turing is best to get remote U.S. jobs. Great. Now I've learned something. Thank you so much. Uh, Jara says, Upwork is inclusive, while tuning, Turing is only for developers. Yeah. But again, guys, I want to caution. Uh, put most of your effort on the Upwork is really freelance, short term stable not not really i don't want to say not stable income but you will struggle negotiating your work what do you mean by a job by made are most jobs open for hiring that long no final what we mean is we are preparing you to be job ready by then so the job that you're choosing you know should be achievable by that date um so if your goal is a specific job that has 10 years of, of that requires 10 years of experience, you would not have those those 10 years of experience by May 2024. Mm -hmm. If it is requiring you to have a Web3, uh, you know, some sort of experience or certification or a qualification, that is realistic by May 2024 because you are busy doing that right now. We aren't actually applying, right? That's a very good question. I will leave that to Pascaline uh, to answer. What is the deadline for submission? Sorry, I've missed that. Thank you so much for reminding me. It is Saturday, uh, 8 p.m. UTC, this coming Saturday. So all of our assignments will be due every Saturday. Thank you so much. I've missed it. I actually thought it was the one at the end. The deadline was on the front page. I know what do you mean? Oh, so it's related to our experience. Yeah, narrow down your searches to experience. You know what? If if Pascaline confirms that you shouldn't apply uh, or wrote us, then that's great. I think for those who are a little bit experienced, why not try? Why not start? Why not start doing the applications? And that is to finals, not final, but somebody asked. Uh, Abdullah, um, Abdul, Abdul, I'll call you Abdul, Hamid, yeah, any more questions, comments, share experiences, I mean, we've learned about Turing now, I, I like that, I didn't know it, um, where we were reminded of crossover, anything else, and anything that I said that wasn't clear, that I need to clarify, please share. Are you guys there? Have we learned something? Have Are we clear on what we need to do? Are the instructions clear? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Angel List is renamed to Well Found. That's correct. Yes. Yes. Angel List. But if you type Angel List, you will still be directed to Well Found. Uh, somebody has their hand up. Uh, can you you can go, or was that a mistake? The Dorcas, for now, uh, focus on data engineering. Yes. Link to document. Pascaline will share that with you. Comment on perseverance facing rejection. Oh, let me put on my camera for that. Um, that is part of the process. You will be rejected a couple of times. 
the trick really is your level, your attention to the job that you're applying, the attention that you apply. So don't waste your efforts on something you know I'm not, I'm not qualified for this. Um, you know, the, the from the location to the requirements to level of experience, but the rejections will come and you will find that actually, oh wow, Hassan, I am actually converting better in the European market or the Middle Eastern market or the African market. Um, you will find that you are converting, conversion, meaning I'm actually getting requests for interviews from those areas as opposed to the US or as opposed to uh, Asia, for example. Don't, don't cancel out Asia, yeah? Um, because th that's also a huge market for you guys, remote from there. But but the the rejections are totally normal. Uh, I think what will encourage you, and what I can say how you will get yourself through this, is to remember your goal. Why did you start, and why do you want this? That's how you'll persevere. Any more? We still have a few minutes. Um, thank you, Pascaline, for sharing. It is not entirely clear. Do we just prepare a description of the three jobs we have? Um, Abraham, yes, you just follow the instructions that says we want to the job title, a link to the job, um, what are the requirements, etc. cetera. Um, that is what, you, for each job, you do that on the four slides that we require. And yes, the jobs that you are eligible for are jobs that are data engineer and you're asking me actually a, a very good question when I when I searched I just asked ChatGPT for uh, different type job variations of data engineering right I hope you guys can still see you know data engineering is the common thing but you'll find that some 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 companies or recruiters you know they use titles like uh, big data engineer, data warehouse engineer, streaming data engineer, data integration engineer, data pipeline engineer. Uh, but you need to look at the requirements for those jobs that maybe they're a little bit different from the job data engineer title. Um, so it's really just very important to be clear on that. So again, if I can share this is uh, Abram, it's just to... Um, what is required of you is literally to do this. Name of company, position, which team are you joining, meaning department. Um, and then in addition to this information that we need from you is just your reflection. And you could combine your reflection to say on those three jobs, this is my, you know, you don't have to reflect per job. And if you want to, I think it's also okay. Is it clear now, Abram? Yeah. You're already putting me on the spot. Digital nomad versus uh, visa to remote work. Um, if that's part of your goal, it's not impossible. Um, it's not impossible. Digital nomad just meaning you're located anywhere, but you're working for a company that you US based. Um, and some companies have digital nomad visas, meaning you're not or some countries, meaning you're not working for a company, maybe in our country, but we do give digital nomad visas because they contribute to our economy in various ways, like the rent, the food, the, it's almost like a tourist visa. Remote work is good. Yeah, if you want to do, but I'm, I'm seeing a lot of the IT space, even if you're located in that specific country, most of the jobs in the IT space are now very much remote you work from home and some of the companies really provide you with the equipment like this they even give you a laptop they even give you monthly allowance for data and cell phone and connect uh, yeah your data stuff they, they do that and insurance for your gadgets so reading the job description is nice and and seeing kind of what are the benefits Okay, Abram, I'm glad I am clear. If there are no questions, Pascaline, any closing remarks? I want to say thank you so much for uh, uh, embracing me uh, and good luck with this. 
assignment or challenge i think i hope you see the value the longer term value in in what we're trying to achieve here maroon you haven't said anything i think i joined when i wasn't checking i, I hope you still got to catch up and get the gist of of what is required of you and the goal of this session pascaline are you there yes uh thank you everyone thank you for peho for all the clarifications i think that is it then uh the submission deadline is on saturday if there is no any other question we can call it a day and get ready for our cbs se session uh in like 30 minutes someone raised the hand yeah it was Biruk. guys i'm sorry yeah. about at least yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. You There's can. a question in chat. Can you can you answer that one? The paragraphs are written, and that one. The paragraphs are written. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, you know what, Abraham? Be be creative, or so you decide how you want to do your reflections. Um, but when you are doing a PowerPoint, it's important to structure your document in a way that the person that's grading you can logically follow, can follow your logic. Um, so maybe, you know, do the reflections at the end. Keep the info info and do your reflections at the end. That's what I would do, but only because uh, it's, it's how I think I would want to start with content, content and end off kind of with my reflection. You know, some people even prefer to start with their reflection to say, this was what I got from the experience. This is the feedback on the different jobs and then closing off. Um, I think you can use your discretion on that as long as it's clear. I would do it at the end. Any more questions? No more. Thank you all so much. This was lovely. Rudolf, thank you for me. Can you reach you on Slack for any other question? Uh, you may. Yes, you may. Okay. You may reach, but Abdullah and Pascaline. OK. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. Yeah, and thank, thank you, Rudolf, so for, for giving me courage to, to do this. I, I, I like to talk to an engaging audience, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're, you're welcome. Welcome. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you in 30 minutes on Slack in the community building channel.